Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And my friends, we have another amazing guest this morning to kick the week off. It's a full-time chiropractor who's building her digital marketing business through Facebook, social media. We are going to hear her story here. If you are brand new and you want to get a text message reminder every time we go live, text WUL to 813-296-8553. And we'll shoot you a little text message reminder on um, 10 a.m. Eastern time every morning, Monday through Friday, just to bring you over onto this page and uh, let you join us in an easy way. My friends, with that being said, let's get right into this this morning. I'm excited to talk to Kelsey. Kelsey, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. Uh, where are you calling in from? Olympia, Washington. Olympia, Washington. Okay, so this can be done in even in Olympia, Washington. <laughs> yes, it can. Awesome. So uh, you're a chiropractor. Most would think hear that and say, "What what are you doing in digital marketing? Why why would you be messing around with something um, something outside of your your uh, you know uh, career path? Tell us how you got here. What were you looking for? What was missing?" And that's a good question because I asked myself that question. Like I have a great education and career and I love what I do, but I wanted, well, one, I'm an associate, meaning I don't own the office I work at. Mm -hmm. So I am showing up at a nine to five um, and I wanted additional streams of revenue. I've done a lot of coaching on the side. I've done network marketing. I've done a lot of things. Like we hear this on these interviews all the time. It's like, I've done a lot of things. And what felt right about learning digital marketing is that I'd never done it before. It felt scary. And so my personality is like, if something feels scary, I'm not going to shy away from it. I'm going to just face it and learn it. And it's been a really humbling experience <laughs> because it's not in my wheelhouse at all. Yeah, I would imagine not. Um, you're used to, I go to the chiropractor, you know, once every week or two. And uh, I never see him on his computer. Um, although I'm sure he is in the background. So what was, um, what was the thing that stood out as different from other businesses, entrepreneurial ventures, side hustles that you had tried in the past or done in the past? The biggest thing that stood out to me was that I could do it around my schedule. Um, I'm a single mom to a two year old and I have her hundred percent of the time plus my career and I needed something that I could do either before she woke up or after she went to bed or on my lunch breaks. Just I needed a lot of flexibility and to squeeze in little bits of work all throughout my day or all throughout my week. And you wanted to be able to do that, I would assume, in a way that you don't have to be on the phone all the time. Or um, I, I think you mentioned doing network marketing and, you know, that can be a very labor intensive business. A lot of people don't really realize that they they um, a lot of these companies tell you to go uh, market to your friends and family. And oftentimes that requires you to pick up the phone, to meet them one on one, to, you know, go to meetings, home parties, things of this nature. Mm -hmm. And um, I know for me, the thing that attracted me to digital marketing was that I could do it without really having to talk to other people. Sure, I had to talk into the camera yeah. and sure, I, I was creating content, but I wasn't stuck on 45 minute long conversations with people yeah. on the phone explaining things to people that didn't result in any financial outcome right um exactly. that, did, can you can you identify with that yeah and and i'll be honest while while i appreciate and like digital market or excuse me um network marketing i did need something that i was more independent it was more, so I kind of attribute it very like similar to like a team sport versus an individual sport. I needed an individual sport in this season of my life. Um, I needed to go and golf by myself instead of playing basketball with teammates. Um, I definitely needed to be like on my time when it worked for me, not getting a babysitter um, and all of those things. So yeah, I definitely identify with that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's hard to meld our schedules with other people. We need to be able mm -hmm. to be independent. That really resonates with me. Um, so, you know, as you were going through our education, being somebody who is well-educated yourself, a doctor of chiropractic, 
Uh, what was that like for you to, to have an unconventional, non-traditional experience? And what did you um, think as you were going through it? Were you, uh, did you have skepticism going into it? And was that uh, overcome? Did you go into it, um, you know, wide open, ready to receive everything? I mean, talk to us a little bit about actually buying the challenge, what that timeline looked at look like, and then what what were the light bulb moments that went off to you, if you can remember, that was like, yeah, I, I want to do this. And I think you upgraded mm -hmm. blueprints, if I'm not mistaken. So you really exactly. went all in to say, I want to learn these skills. Mm -hmm. Well, it all started last spring, almost a year ago. Um, I did the challenge and I like eat up educa education. Like that's like my wheelhouse. If I could be a professional student, I would. There's no money in that. So, um, so I went through the 15 days. I loved it. It wasn't my time to do the blueprints at the at that time. I had other financial obligations. And I honestly was not in a space where I wanted to look up how to do a funnel on YouTube. Like I just wasn't there. And so I kept following and looking and watching a few different people who are successful in this um, industry for eight months until I finally, I had to like hustle and grind to save the money for the blueprints. It took me eight months. Wow. And one, I'm so proud of that. Um, supporting my daughter on my own. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, anyone who's doing it, I just commend you because in this economy, it is a lot. And that's a huge reason why I needed something else, something different. Um, so in eight months, I had the money for the blueprints and I went for it. And because I had to work so hard for that, um, I just, I binged the education. Like I stayed up every night until I got through it and I just like devoured it. It wasn't like, at that point, there was no skepticism. There was no doubt. It was like, okay, I, I wanted this for eight months, like so bad that I could taste it. Mm. And so I went for it. Yeah. Well, you are getting some huge kudos here in the chat. Let's mm -hmm. go. Um, you know, me too. Get it queen. <laughs> you, you got this. Uh, you are amazing. Love you from Naomi Giddings. So proud of you <laughs> from Jessica Morrison. Um, you know, you are so brave, Kelsey. You should be proud of that, Mama. Love your heart in there. So, thanks. Yeah, a lot of people are identifying with, um, you know, I'm right there with you, Single Mama Club. You go, girl. We love you. You're <laughs> and so, how's that feel to know that you're turning your struggles into your strengths? It feels. It feels like, like I'm living my purpose. Um, you know, we all have a lot of struggles. Like we all do. My story is dark and to be on this side of it, um, it feels, I don't want to say good. That doesn't even describe it. Um, in all transparency, I had, so when I got invited to come and do this with you three days before that, I had put on my manifestation list that I wanted to be on Wake Up Legendary. And I wanted to share my story because my whole, like the whole thing for me has been, I've grown in so much self-worth and self-value mm. by purchasing the blueprints. That was the biggest purchase in cash I had ever made. I, I didn't put it on credit. I, I used cash. It was the biggest purchase I'd ever made for me. Um, and that was a huge step of self-worth and self-value. And seeing how like this eight month journey, like I wasn't ready last March. I needed to find my voice. I needed to grow in confidence. I needed to learn my core values. There were so many things. And I know that my story is gonna be relatable because like, I know I'm not the only one. Like I know that there is a community of people who are on their own, raising babies, doing the thing. And I'm so honored to be here and get to share coming from a dark space to where I am now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it's certainly relatable coming from a dark space and uh, turning your mess into a message. 
Uh, it's also uh, not only been for me financially, uh, you know, rewarding, but it's also been really therapeutic and, um, you know, uh, built a lot of self-esteem and confidence. And so talk to us about why you knew that you were ready when you finally did start. What, mm -hmm. what did you see? What did you say to yourself? I got to a place, like I mentioned before, where I could like taste it. I was so hungry for success. There was nothing else. I had, <clears throat> excuse me, I had learned that I needed to take little steps, like the little mundane steps along the way and be very, very, very consistent with those. And there just came a point where I was like, I, I'm not doubting myself. I, last year I dove into a lot of inner child and shadow work. I had a lot of therapy, a lot of therapy, and I got to a space where I could actually see myself being successful and I could see this being something for me versus prior to that. It was like, wow, like they're doing something amazing, but I don't think I could do that. And I don't think it, I don't mm. think I could be successful in that way. Mm. And it switched. And so I pulled the trigger. I love that. I I can tell you that therapy has in sobriety <laughs> has been my probably one of my top, if not number one, superpowers uh, in my business. You know, mm -hmm. and I think way too often we are just looking to online business gurus. We are looking to people on the internet that we don't really know quite who they are, or what they're all about to, you know, fix all of our problems. And the truth is, is that nobody's going to fix your problems except you. And it's an inside job. Yeah. It's an inside job. It's not an external job. I mean, I can tell you that I've seen a lot of people who have had financial success, but weren't emotionally and mentally, you know, healed or uh, mm -hmm. were still very, you know, very toxic, very, um, uh, you know, had a lot of old habits, addictions, hangups, trauma that was still dominating their lives. And that's one of the reasons why we talk about limiting beliefs. It's one doorway into that, right? For somebody who is never done any therapy or even if you have, you still can say, what limiting beliefs do I have today? But it's also something that makes sense even if you haven't done any therapy. And so what did you realize were some of your limiting beliefs? What did you realize were some of the things that you were holding you back and were limiting beliefs before when you didn't get started, when you and then when you, even when you did get started, because certainly you're not perfect. Mm -hmm. I guess. No. I'm not either. No. What, what are some of the, whether they be now, back then, whatever, what comes up for you when I ask you, what were some of those limiting beliefs that you began to recognize were really holding you back? Well, first I do want to share that part of why I chose to be a part of Legendary Marketer is because you do highlight the need to address limiting beliefs. That was something already in my, like, not scope, but like in my like vision of like things I was working on. And that was like a very affirming and confirming aspect for me where I was like, okay, this is a community I need to be in. So limiting beliefs prior, <clears throat> one that I really struggled with was that I, I might get emotional again. Oh my gosh. I, let me take a deep breath. <laughs> When I got pregnant with my daughter, um, I chose to keep the pregnancy and her father's not around and he hasn't been. And I was told by people in my family that I was struggling because I chose this and that I like I chose the, to keep the pregnancy. So I just needed to like struggle through it. And I kind of deserve that struggle. Mm. And that is one of the things where. Like, yes, I chose this and she's the most miraculous, amazing thing in my life, but we're not going to struggle. Like I'm choosing something different. Yeah. And that was a pit. I was stuck in. I was like, well, this is just the struggle of being a single mom and this is just mm. what it's going to be. That's not true. Um, 
another limiting belief that I had is that I didn't have the time or capacity to do one more thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, single parent or not, like raising a child is is a huge responsibility. Oh, did we, sorry about that. I think I cut out a little bit. Yeah, um, my, one of my limiting beliefs was that I didn't know how to fit something else in. So I bought a giant wall calendar. Like I'm telling you like four feet tall. It like goes on my wall. It's laminated. And I get my workout in. Did I do my journaling? Like I write it all in with color codes to just show myself that that's just a limiting belief and I can do this and I can schedule it in. So those were a couple from before. Um, presently, limiting beliefs are, okay, I've tasted some success, um, but is the level of success, is that something I can achieve? And I catch myself with that and I have to give my, myself affirmations every day and continue to do the therapy and continue to, continue to do the work because like you said before, like we're not perfect and it's never like healed and done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, powerful. Hey, would you log out and come back in because your, yeah. your screen is frozen? And oh, no. I, I'm so sorry. Yes, I'll be right back. Here. Yeah, thanks. Powerful stuff, my friends. Powerful stuff. If you are uh, wanting to get started, you're new here, you stumbled upon this, you're trying to figure out where to go, what to do, you can go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll and uh, get started with our challenge, with our blueprints, with our mastermind. Hey, welcome back. Hi, sorry about that. Thank you. No worries. Uh, so, man, wow. Those are some powerful, vulnerable um shares there and uh, got a lot of tears and a lot of uh, identification. It really is powerful. You, you all are not only sharing in this powerful story and conversation, but you're also witnessing um, what, what we talk about when we talk about like really telling your story in a vulnerable, authentic, honest way. How powerful that can be, how deep that can resonate. Uh, I really encourage all of you to, um, you know, uh, to, to, to try and test vulnerability. There was a great book. It still exists by Brene Brown called Daring Greatly. It's, it talks about vulnerability in business and leadership. It talks about that vulnerability is a better way to, to uh, connect and lead and persuade people than, um, you know, sales gimmicks or tricks or um, anything else like that. Uh, it, it really humanizes us, and um, and and this is uh, this is really you know this is really powerful and a great example of that as you're sharing a lot of these really honest and um, courageous things with us. Family can be harsh, you know. Family can be harsh. And, um, you know, a lot of times we have voices in our head uh, and they are voices from, you know, even our adulthood, but especially our childhood of a critical parent or, um, you know, somebody in our family that that handed us some messaging and th that messaging becomes belief systems. Because if you hear a message over and over again for long enough, um, it becomes a belief. It becomes yeah. a, a belief, and um, you know you 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 see it in society. You see it in politics. You you see it in uh, marketing of all sorts, all kinds of products. But even more so powerful when it comes from family because those are the people that we entrust to guide us in life. And if we can't trust family, who can we trust? And oftentimes they're just giving us bad information. They're yeah. giving us misinformation. And so um, I sense that you have had a real breakthrough in terms of setting boundaries and um, you know who, who you're going to ask for input, 
who you're going to talk to about the plans that you have with your life. Is that a piece of this for you? Uh, The main piece, (laughs) honestly, it's been the main piece. That's why I wasn't ready from last spring until the fall when I finally did get the blueprints and start is I had a lot of growing and healing and boundary setting um, because like, I, I really believe that the things that are given to us generationally are just from their own hurt and their own like limiting beliefs. Like they're just, they're accidentally passing them on. It's, it's not intentional at all. Um, But I think that the concept that we're only as successful or only as healthy as the five people closest to us, it counts with family too. And so I had been living my life with, okay, if the five friends that I have around me are like-minded and healing and working on building wealth, then that's an awesome start. But I also had to look at the family and to decide like, who do I want to let in on this journey? Who do I not want to let in on this journey? It's not personal, but we only have one life and I want to create a, a different legacy for my daughter. So that's been a huge part of it. Yeah. I mean, you have, you have a little life that is now entrusting you to guide and you to, uh, it's a great responsibility. And um, it, 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 it is uh it is true that that compassion that you're giving to your family. But at the end of the day, um, you know, if a family member in particular continues to stay toxic, critical, emotionally abusive, um, puts us down, you know, it is OK to set a hard boundary. It is OK to completely cut them off. It is OK to not go back home for the holidays. It is OK to not pick up that phone. It is okay to not respond to that text. It is okay. Even if it's just for a season, even if it's just for a season and you can explain yourself or you don't have to explain yourself, but you're absolutely right, Kelsey, that life is short and many of us are living our lives way too worried about what friends and family are going to think of what we're doing when they've already demonstrated and we have evidence that they are not great advice givers and oftentimes and are not supportive and oftentimes are not even taking their own advice um, and their lives are, you know, toxic and dysfunctional. And so uh, it's really important, I think, as we go on this journey to ask ourselves, how does this person make me feel to have them in my life? Do I feel bigger with them? Do I feel like I can accomplish anything with their support? Or or do they make me feel smaller? Do they make me feel scared? Do they make me feel anxious? Do they make me feel responsible for their feelings? And I think as we begin to ask ourselves that question, answer honestly, and then set appropriate boundaries, we actually do open up space, both actual time, but also emotional space mm-hmm. to be able to use that energy somewhere else that's more valuable, that's more powerful, that's more impactful, rather mm-hmm. than, I don't know about you all, but it, when I am in conflict or I am trying to convince, explain, or receiving toxic criticism from somebody, it is draining and I feel small, you know, does that resonate with you? Well, Dave, if I had a hat on, I'd be like taking it off and throwing it down. <laughs> I'll do it for you. Thank you. That was so good. That was so good and so powerful. Thank you for sharing that. So yes, it, it resonates. It definitely resonates and that is the nervous system regulation aspect that is in my wheelhouse like as a chiropractor i I really specialize in nervous system regulation over like back pain neck pain and that's the stuff where it did feel familiar where it was like okay do i feel like uplifted or like is this sucking my energy all of those things and those are questions that i had to learn to ask myself and to be okay with the answers and there was a grieving process i you know it's not just like oh, I don't feel my full potential in this person's space. So, okay, done, bye. It it wasn't like that. It was a lot of tears, a lot of tears, a lot of grieving, 
a lot of like wondering, like, is it going to change or how can it change? What's my part? What isn't my part? It's, it's been this whole process, really all of 2023 for me. Um, but on the other side of that is so much more like confidence, viewing a different future, the future that I want for my daughter and myself. Um, a lot of, I, I'm, I'm so proud of myself, honestly. And I know that the younger version of myself is so proud of me too, um, because we're doing the hard things and, and it's not easy because I would imagine that sometimes the people who are no longer invited into the space, they probably have their feelings hurt. Um, especially, you know, I have had conversations and I haven't had some conversations. Um, and so I'm sure there are like, there's other emotions and there's other things with it. And for me, like that's a challenge because I don't want to hurt anybody and I don't, I don't want anyone to have their feelings hurt by me. But again, this is my one life and I need to do it in a healthy way. And I need to model to my daughter, like, this is how we set boundaries. Like we don't let people treat us like crap. Like we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, my seven-year-old daughter will say to anybody, anytime, I don't like when people talk to me like that because, you know, she's been, had that modeled. And also, you know, we also teach our kids in how we respond to them, how to set boundaries when we, sh when we set boundaries with them, you know, not only when we set boundaries with other people, but when we actually set boundaries with them and, um, you know, uh, you know, it, it is, it is the greatest gift. And yes, the old cliche of do as I say, not as I do is it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Uh, you actually create resentment and you create, um, you know, you create a, you, you lose respect of your children and the people around you when you say to do something, but don't do it yourself. And so uh, modeling, you know, kids take after the behaviors that are around them. And uh, when we both exemplify those behaviors to our kids, but also to other adults in our life, man, they're getting a, they're getting an education that is the very thing that's been missing from all of our upbringings you know, but the very thing that we needed was emotional tools and boundary setting and communication skills. And uh, most of us did not get that. And so um, I love to hear that, uh, you know, I love to hear all this from you. So what was uh, it like to then go from learning since you said that, hey, I could be a lifetime student. I could just, what was it like to go from learning and being that student in that comfort zone, all excited, getting ready to get ready, but oh crap, now I got to put this stuff into action, posting that first video. Talk to us about that process. Yeah, I, I did let it get to my head at first. I got super freaked out and nervous and I was hyping it up. I was like, what do I post first? And I didn't do anything for a couple of days. It was like, paralysis what do they call it like analysis paralysis um i definitely struggled with that at first and then i posted my first few reels and when i go back and look like they were they weren't good they were not good at all like i would not redo them if i if i'm knowing what i know now i would i would not do that content again <laughs> and i just had to be okay with it it was just like well I don't know what I'm doing really. Like I'm learning this and I kept hanging on to, I learned from a few other um, affiliate marketers who are successful in this space and they, they give information to new people. It was like, just post for 30 days and see what happens. And then you'll have some analytics. And so that's what I set my mind on. I was like, I don't even care what gets looked at. I don't care what gets shared, what gets saved. I don't care. I just want to get through these first 30 days and then I'm going to take a look and see like what did well, what didn't. And then I'm going to morph and change and figure it, it out from there. And I had made a goal like every 30 days, I was just going to do that again. And I was just going to learn from what I did the month before and it was going to grow. And I had to then was exposed with even more perfectionistic tendencies that I had to then take to therapy and then take to my journaling. It's just every single month there was something new to learn and to grow. And, and that's how I, I did it. I just stopped caring what was mm. getting seen. I, I just couldn't care in the moment. 
Yeah, that's that's really what it boils down to. It's not a real secret. You have to just start caring about the right things, which are um, what do you feel about this? How how do you feel about your journey and your progress? Are you doing better than you did yesterday? Are you growing? Are you learning? You know, and this is me speaking to me. Am I learning? Am I growing? Competing with self instead of competing with others in this whole comparisonitis, um, you know, trap that so many of us fall in where, I mean, I could find people out there on the internet that I compare myself to and could easily say, why bother? They've got it. They've already got this covered. Yeah. When the reality is I mean, that, that, that's, that's, um, that could be true. That might be true. And it's also true that there's a chair for me. There's mm-hmm. room for me. Mm-hmm. There, you know what I'm going to, nobody's, nobody's waiting with that chair to kind of me to sit down and come in and push me in. And I'm going to have to go in and say, is this chair, is this seat open? This yeah. chair, I'm going to have to come in and I'm going to have, you ever go into like a restaurant or somewhere and you've got a few friends, but there's only two tables and you got to go to other tables and get chairs. Hey, are you using this? Hey, is this seat open? Hey, you got to mm-hmm. talk to people and actually find your damn seat. Yeah, that's exactly that's it. That's exactly it. Like there is enough room at the table, but you have to find your chair. Exactly what you said. And there is enough financial success for all of us but you have to sit in your chair you have to get into that chair and sit there and do the work yeah you got to claim it you really got to walk in like you own the place this is another (laughs) thing that so often we tiptoe and oh my god i I don't want to bother you i don't want to i don't want to ruffle any feathers i hope that didn't offend you or bother you or oh i don't want to email too many times and the truth is is that Nobody's taking it personal if you email them three times in the day. They're just going to unsubscribe. They're not going to go, oh, my God, I can't believe Kelsey emailed me again. I am so offended, you know, or I cannot believe she posted another video on social media. This is all they're going to do. Ready for it? If they don't want to see it. Let me show you real closely, everybody. Watch. If you don't watch closely, you're going to miss it. Do you see it? That's all they're going to do. This right here with a thumb. Just scroll on by. They don't care. Nobody cares. And so how 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 does that resonate with you? Have you needed to give yourself a, a pep talk in order to or to refocus and reframe things to actually become somebody who posts consistently, who is not aggressive is an aggressive word, but who's consistent and who is, or did you, are you struggling or did you struggle at all with that kind of, well, I don't want to post too many times or I don't want to bother anybody. Mm -hmm. So yes to all of that. So in the very beginning, I was posting content that didn't resonate and feel good to me. Like it wasn't my voice. I was like mimicking people too much. I was scrolling before I would create, which for me does not work because then I have no like creative juices. Mm. Um, Or I was seeing like, oh, so-and-so is posting this type of thing and they're so successful. So I'm going to post that type of stuff. And so I was tiptoeing because it wasn't authentic and it wasn't Mm. me at all. Mm. And I honestly started to burn out rather quickly doing that because I was faking my presence, not a malicious way, but that was definitely part of my first month of learning. Like it had to be my voice. And then I started doing um, a program. I purchased a a self-led business program with someone that is um, in kind of like the spiritual realm with like lots of inner child and shadow that did resonate with me. And the the goal of the program is to find your voice and your passion in your business. And so I was like, okay, this is my business. Like, what is my voice? And when I asked myself, like, what is my passion in this? I didn't know. So I've been actually chipping along through that program still. 
and that has transformed the way I'm showing up because mm. I'm creating my own content based on what my heart feels passionate about. And then my biggest mindset shift was, okay, if I value this education so much, and if I have grown in so much confidence that like I was teary sharing about it, why wouldn't I want to share that with someone else? Like if I had the cure to a chronic illness that thousands or hundreds of thousands of people are struggling with, why wouldn't I share it? Like I would literally go on the, like the rooftops and be screaming it. And so mm. that's what I've been reminding myself is I have grown as a person so much through this journey of showing up on my socials. I already had a warm audience on my Facebook and that was, that's, wow, I almost feel like there's a little bit of a rabbit hole because that was scary. Yeah. Um, but that warm audience that I already had, it, it, it needed a lot of nurturing and it needed a lot of like care and devotion to it versus like coming out just like selling. And so that is, those have been like the mindset shifts is like, I just want to help people. I want to, especially, I mean, of course, because I am a single mom, of course, like single parent, single parents in general, I have like a really soft spot for, um, because when we can make an extra bit of money, like it's such a life changing opportunity and experience to open an email and be like, wow, like I'm at my nine to five and I just made money. Like what? And so that's been my heart behind it is like, this is changing my life and I know it's going to change your life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love the piece about all of that. I love the piece about finding your voice, de developing your message, owning your own image, your identity. Many of us just come in and we just don't have an identity, you know, mm -hmm. and, and if we look at it's not just I don't have an identity in this. I didn't really have an identity in my in my previous life either. I mean, I was a such and such employee at such and such company. I was a I mommed uh, Sally, Ben, and John. I'm you know husband or wife. I'm this or that. I'm single mother, right? I mean, so there's this this we really need to you know, ask ourselves when we come into this, what am I, what do I love talking about? What can I talk about for just, you know, if I could find my a best friend who, who would just be totally, I could just go down rabbit holes with, what would we talk about? What would just light me on fire? And, you know, for me, um, it, in, in my early days of creating content and getting started with affiliate marketing and course creation in the core four, it was, you know, making money as an entrepreneur and escaping the nine to five rat race of living paycheck to paycheck, working construction in the hot Florida sun. It was recovering from addiction, sobriety, mental health. It was um, fatherhood and, you know, being a better dad. Be, you know, for me, I was making up time. I have an older son and I was making up some, some, some lost ground you know, to try to make amends and, and to, um, you know, to uh, just be a better all around father. And so those were three things right there that I was really passionate about. Um, I may could also have a hobby. It just so happened when I started, I didn't really have any hobbies. For some of you, that may be fishing or golfing or even chiropractic. You could be so passionate about, and I would assume that you're seeing the, the, the value of these strategies and skill sets in these core four business models, how they are transferable to other niches, how you can take these business models and marketing strategies and not only market in the online marketing niche or the you know weight loss niche, but also for you as a chiropractic and having that particular expertise, which many of us have an expertise that we're passionate about. We just may not like the way in which we have to work to to deliver that service or that knowledge but you have a lot of incredible knowledge about as you said nervous system um you know functionality and is that something that you can see working with in the future and integrating into your business and do you see how these skills and business models are transferable to different niches oh a hundred percent like the skills learned 
open up so many doors to then like picking different niches and growing different businesses. I a hundred percent see how I could use my expertise in chiropractic to build another business. I definitely see it. Um, I've been considering it. Um, but every time I do, it's like right now, I'm just like, okay, simplicity for my life right now. But yes, it's got me dreaming. Like I have a, like a dream journal of different ideas. And when they come to mind, I put them down. And that is one of them. Because once I learned the basic skills, I was like, oh, I could do this for anything, like hundred percent, like anything, which feels really good to have that freedom and that confidence and the high income skills to back it up. It feels really good. Hope I can't hear you. That's because I muted myself. Um, so you've shared with us a lot of different things that have been really powerful, introspective things you've learned about yourself. You know, so I want to just circle back and say, or ask, you know, how has this built your confidence, and what have you learned about yourself along this journey? If you could summarize it, hmm. yeah. To summarize it, I would say. What I've learned about myself is that I have everything that I need to build the life that I want. It's in here already. And I honestly believe all of us are born with that. But it's harnessing the healing and figuring out what's my voice versus other voices. Um, and and that's it's kind of like I see it as a path. Like path A would be me choosing my voice. And path B would be going down the route that I was going of letting other people make my choices for me. And so in essence, the, that would be the biggest way that I've grown and changed and grown in confidence on this journey. Mm. Wow. And so often that can be unconscious, right? Not even really knowing that somebody else's voice or belief systems are driving us. And I just love that you, you shared that and that you have that awareness and have made so much progress with that. What advice would you give to somebody who's sitting on this, you know, who's on the fence, who is at the beginning of their journey? I mean, what can they do to kind of find, to get centered and to prepare to start? Well, I'm going to go back to the limiting beliefs. I believe, I really believe that that is the place to start. It'd be just set your timer for 10 minutes write down everything negative that you think about yourself, like everything, anything mm. on critical in your head, write it all down without any shame. And then be done with that for that 10 minutes, come back the next day, set the timer for 10 minutes again, and write a truth next to each one of those. And mm. then see how different they are. And then that's my best advice is to like, see what it is that's holding you back. And then decide what you want to work on first on this journey, because it now might not be the time like it wasn't the time for me in the very beginning. Um, but that would be a way to start to figure out, like, why am I just sitting here and why am I not taking action? Yeah. So often seeing those on a piece of paper can be rather shocking, right? It's like, I'm not going to continue to let this, I'm not going to continue to put this gas in my tank, right? Or let this gas run my engine, uh, these limiting negative critical beliefs. Do I even believe this about myself or did I hear this? Let me go and give these back to somebody who, who the hell gave this stuff to me? Oh, oh, let me give that back. What do I really think about myself? What evidence do I have? So often we hear other people's inspirational stories and we think, oh, if I could only, and it's like, well, what have you survived? What have you overcome? Each one of you, each one of us have survived and overcome insurmountable odds. I mean, things that, that we should have never made it through. We are doing things that are, you know, defying gravity damn near, you know, I mean, we are surviving and even thriving when, um, we could have given up a long time ago. And, uh, man, it's like you, each one of us have, and I love that you said that. Cause I say that too, everything that we need already inside of us in order to be successful. Is anything else coming up for you that you feel that you want to share or following up on what I just said before we bring this in for a landing? 
No, I, one, I just appreciate this conversation. I just wanted to acknowledge that and just thank you for creating a platform so we could have this conversation. Um, but no, there's nothing else at this point that I have to add to it. Well, you, you've been a, a real joy and a real pleasure to talk to here this morning. It's been, it's been a very, you know, inspirational and, um, you know, a lot of people, I hope you have time to go back and read some of these comments and my friends, thank you for all of the warm and supportive comments that you've left for Kelsey, uh, you know, for sharing so vulnerably for, you know, coming on here and, um, you know, getting, you know, getting real and being vulnerable with us. Uh, you know, it's, it's not only been inspirational, but it's also been a great modeling exercise for us to see how powerful it can be when we take our mess and figure out how to turn it into a message. Cause that is what exactly you've done here this morning. I mean, you've shared a lot of things that could have easily been had a sad ending and we're all kind of like, Oh, what do we do now? You know, <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, I have this story in my lap. How do I even make sense of it? But it's like, you have done the work to turn your mess into a message and the impact that it's had on us just this morning is it's um it's it's really powerful and so thank you stay legendary my friend come back and see me here in the near future okay and keep up the great work thank you have a good day bye guys all right my friends you can go and find follow learn all the things, support Kelsey over on TikTok. Yeah, she's on TikTok too. The.single.momtrepreneur. The.single.momtrepreneur. Okay, that's M-O-M-trepreneur. Kind of like entrepreneur. It's just mom instead of the E-N at the beginning. Also on Instagram, at the.mindset.body.doc. Okay, it's up on the screen for you the.mindset.body.doc, okay? Find Kelsey over on Instagram and you can find her on Facebook, Kelsey Clevenger 87 okay? Uh, my friends, wow, what a powerful episode this morning. What a great way to start the week. I'm, I'm off the backboard, off the backboard, baby, okay? It's a beautiful, powerful um you know, thing we've got going here uh, with just the real shares and uh, people telling their stories, giving their testimonials in, in a way, uh, in just such a real and long form way that you get to hear the real context behind the scenes instead of just the 30 second commercial. You understand how people are overcoming the things that they need to overcome to be successful and um, and and how people are uh, how people are really doing it. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Right. So if this resonates with you and you want to build a business and you want to grow and you want to build confidence and, and you want to create a different life for yourself, then take that first step. And there was so much tangible, practical advice that Kelsey gave today. Not easy stuff. Not easy stuff but stuff that will truly change your life when you face yourself to get through things instead of trying to get around them. You build the person that you were meant to be. Step into your true potential, which you already have inside of you, as Kelsey said, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. So once again, thank you everybody for the amazing supportive comments. I hope Kelsey gets a chance to go back and uh, check all of those out because uh, you guys are the best. Uh, if you want to get started, you can go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll. That's E-N-R-O-L-L, legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll. Start with our challenge, enroll in our blueprints, come to a mastermind. My friends, we look forward to seeing you inside and hopefully maybe one day on the show in the near future. Get out of here. Have a fantastic Monday. Um, be great. Be legendary. And um, thank you, Kelsey, again for an amazing episode. Get out of here. Peace.